And I'm just playing a little roll out of the bottom that I can feel right there because I want to get it nice and flat straight across. It's curved in this direction, but it's flat straight across. So I want it to be nice and smooth. And then we're breaking in to composite construction. We're going to be uh, using carbon fiber and white cedar. So, you know, it's kind of nature's composite construction here. We're using something natural and then something man-made in between. So, you know, uh, it's not something I've done before, but I think it's going to be kind of fun, you know. It kind of came to me one day that uh, I'd like to have it nice and strong through that chine area because I didn't want to see it ever separate. So I figured, well, a composite construction would make that possible. So the carbon fiber is the choice, and uh, we've got it laid out on a table over there. We're just going to cut a piece out and lay it over the boat and wet it out. And uh, it's, uh, it's going to have to happen kind of quickly because I don't want it going off on me because what's going to happen is while it's still wet, I'm going to put the second layer of bottom planking over the top of that and weight that down with lead weights. And uh, I've already tested that all out. It fits really, really nice, and uh, it's going to be held on there really properly. Then I'm also going to take the second layer of garbage planking and put that on, and we're going to clamp that on with clamps and blocks and things. And what's going to happen is that's going to put a pressure on the bottom as well as the weights. And it works out pretty well. So it's going to be pretty interesting. It's a test, I think, especially for me. And uh, I'm pleased to take the test. Let's, let's try it out. Let's go over to the table and, uh, and prepare some of this cloth. Now, I just wanted to show you quickly this area right here at the heel of the stem. Uh, you can see that there aren't any fastenings holding the thing together. It's all glued together here right now. There's nothing, you know, uh, nothing, nothing fastened. It's glued on. The planking's glued onto the stem. And uh, but one thing I did was I pointed the stem just like this. It doesn't have a rabbit in it anywhere. All the way down to the heel end. And when I put the planking on like that, I ended the planking short and, and uh, planed it off square across. Now you can see that I've capped it here with a little laminated cap of white oak. It's got three laminates of white oak here. I glued them up and I clamped it right around the garbage plank to the heel end of the stem. And uh, I kind of like that because what it does is it binds this plank to the other plank. And it's all glued up in this area. You know, like I said, it's not, it's not going to be moving around up here at all. It's going to be capped over with carbon fiber. And uh, if there's any movement or flexibility in the structure of this boat, it'll be up in this area. It won't be down in here because I want the thing to be, like I say, it's composite construction. It's not going to be given the opportunity to move in these areas like a wooden boat would, would have, you know, uh, where it's just bedded on and the fastenings are holding it together. This doesn't move around. This is meant to stay together right here. So, you know, we're, now what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, carbon fiber over it and probably wrap it right around the ends right here and then uh, put our second layer of planking over the top of that. All right, let me tell you a little bit about our glue station here and our little table that we've got set up for the carbon fiber. First, we've got a little table on top of the table saw here, just a piece of plywood. That's all we need, you know, and we just threw it up on there and we're all set to start mixing. Now, we're using our two to one high performance total boat epoxy glue here. And I think this is the stuff that soaks into the cloth real easy and soaks into the wood really good. So, you know, we're happy to use this. And uh, we're using mixing cups today with the calibrations on the side of the mixing cups to mix it properly rather than using the pumps because this is a little bit quicker and we're going to be mixing quite a bit of it. So that's the way we're going to go with that. Joe and I are over at our little improvised table here. And I mean to say this thing is improvised. It's just made up of our same table that we've been using to uh, prepare planks for the dory with. And we added a little piece of plywood on the other side and supported it with the vacuum cleaner. But you need a table when you're doing this because you've got it on a four foot roll and there's really no way to handle it unless you put it on the floor and you might gather up all kinds of dust and all kinds of problems. So you put it up on a table and you can roll it out on the table like this and do your cutting up here. Now, Joe's rolling it kind of near the edge of the table over there, keeping it on the edge. And I'm going to use a pair of scissors and cut it right down the middle because that's all I need is about half the uh, roll here. Now, I sharpened the scissors up myself. I don't have any electric scissors, so I've had to 
make sure that I have a nice sharp pair, but this stuff cuts pretty easy. Now that is a sharp pair of scissors right there. Now we can just roll this up, Joe. Roll that one right up too. So what we do is we just roll it up close to each other and pick the whole thing up and carry it down the table and set it back down. And uh, we're able to just roll it out again. Now we're rolling it up near the undisturbed roll and there's a reason for that. We don't want to drag the cloth on the table because the cloth could get hung up on any of the fibers on that plywood table just about anywhere and uh, that wouldn't be good. So what we do is we just roll it up close to each other. Joe's like keeping it near the edge of the table and I'm kind of folding it over that one piece of plywood there because it kind of shows me where the edge of it is and I'm able to use that fold to follow along with the scissors. I haven't applied any tape to it or done anything or drawn any lines or done anything like that. I've basically just followed the edge of that plywood and I'm only trying to rough this thing right down the middle here with a pair of scissors. Again, we're using Total Boat 2 to 1 high performance epoxy resin and we're going to use the calibrations on the cup in order to do the mixing this time. Now I've put some black dots alongside the lines on the calibrations that I want to pour up to and you can see those black dots and the lines from the inside of the cup, never mind from the outside of the cup. The calibrations are obviously printed on the outside of the cup, but we're going to be viewing it from the inside of the cup. I'm going to start with the hardener and I'm going to pour it up to the line that's alongside the first black dot. That's one pot hardener. Now I'm going to pick up the resin and pour it up to number three, which is two pots resin. So that's two to one, two pots resin and one pot hardener. Personally, I find it a little bit easier to mix or get the calibrations right on the two to one mix than I would the five to one mix with this method of mixing using the calibrations on the cup. So that's one of the reasons why I prefer the two to one mix glue. There's other reasons too. It's got less amine blush, it's a little bit more flexible and uh, you know it's the clearest of the epoxy glues. Not that that matters in this situation but you know in some situations it would be a, a distinct advantage. Now I'm going to make sure that I mix this stuff up thoroughly because I always do and it's never failed me yet so I'm not going to be shy on the mixing. All right, I've mixed about half of one of these mixing cups and poured it out. And I can see that that's about half of what I need. So we've got Joe mixing again. And uh, we're going to keep spreading it here. I'm sure it's a little thicker in spots than I need it to be. So I can go over it. But I'm just going to get it spread out everywhere first. All right, now I'm going to see what I can do with a spreader. The spreader does make it quite a bit easier to move the glue around. You know, it's stiffer than the brush is and a little bit wider, so it works quite a bit better. Now, there are some requirements here. One of the requirements is, is that I don't let too much glue get on the side of the boat here because it'll just be running down and running right off the blue tape. So I'm wetting out the bottom and moving the glue all around, getting as much as possible everywhere that I can and I don't want it to be short anywhere, that's for sure. And uh, it is getting onto the garbage planks and I've got to be awful careful, like I said, not to get too much on there. So I'll pull it back uphill after I've applied it to the garbage planks, back up onto the bottom, where I don't mind if there's a little bit of a generous supply because it really helps if you have that generous supply underneath the cloth because you're wetting the cloth out in that sense from both sides rather than just from one side. I'm just doing some final passes with the spreader here to just make sure that I've got glue everywhere and I don't have it puddled up too deep in any one spot or especially near the edge where I don't want it to run down off the tape. All right, that's it right there too. I'm going to put the cloth on it. I'm just going to make sure it covers the, you know, gets down to the tape in the middle of the boat here. Go for it. To start, Joe and I are just going to take our plastic spreaders and go over the carbon fiber. And what we're trying to do here is to apply a pressure to the cloth that allows it to suck up the resin that's beneath the cloth. 
like I said, we've applied a little bit extra glue under the cloth because I believe that it would help if the cloth was saturated from both sides. Once we're convinced that all the excess resin that's on the boat is soaked up into the back side of the cloth, it's time to pour some more resin on top of the cloth. So Joe's going to pour some out and I'm going to take a spreader and start spreading that around. Just like before, I'm going to pull the glue from the center of the boat towards the end of the boat. It's the easiest spot really to pour it out right in the center of the boat and I can work it very easily from there. I don't have to pour a little bit here and a little bit there. It's very simple to pull it around with the spreader. And I'm very concerned about saturating the bottom out first. I want to get that thing saturated and soak up almost all of the resin. Even though there may be an excess of resin on the bottom, I can now use that excess very easily to pull it over the side of the boat and start saturating the cloth that's on the garbage strakes. Now, it's a little bit more precarious doing this because I don't want that glue running all over the place. So I'm going to pull it from the bottom over onto the sides of the garbage and uh, saturate the garbage as well as I can. And you can see it saturating right into the cloth. Once I've got that done, I'm going to go over to the table and help Joe, who's taken over the second layer of bottom plank and, and is now spreading on some thickened glue onto that. I'm going to switch over to a tooth trowel to spread this thickened epoxy because it is fairly thick and there's just no other tool that will spread it around real easy and get the same amount everywhere. The tooth trowel just saves the day in this situation. I can go up and down the middle and get the same amount everywhere. I can pull it towards the edges without making a mess. It just works so well that there's just no other tool to use. Same as before, I'm going to work my way towards the edges with just a little bit of reservoir of glue. The reason I've thickened the glue is that I want to make absolute certain that I've got contact between the carbon fiber, the first layer of bottom planking, and the second layer of bottom planking. The thickened layer of glue just makes that happen and we are certain that we don't have any voids or any problems. Now Joe and I are going to carry that second layer of bottom planking over into position and we've got our original nail holes here so that we can line it up exactly where it belongs think, because it has to be lined up perfectly. This is kind of a precision sort of a build right here and it's real important that we get these things exactly right. So we're going to place it down into a position, uh, drive a few nails in the original holes and then we're going to pick up some lead weights and spread those around the bottom. We're going to wiggle that bottom planking around a little bit, back and forth and back and forth, till we make sure that we make 100% contact between the three layers. Now I'm going to take my nice sharp scissors and cut off all the excess cloth that we don't need. I'm using that blue tape as a guide. Now I can cut right along the edge of that blue tape or I could actually cut up on top of it. It's a little bit difficult to make a nice perfectly straight cut and it isn't necessary because the next layer of planking is going to go up beyond the cloth. Once the cloth is cut, Joe and I are going to remove the tape because the tape is up too high and uh, it might possibly be under the cloth in a few spots and that's no problem. It might disturb the cloth a little bit or the weave of the cloth, but I'm able to straighten that right back out again. Now I'm going to re-tape a little bit further down where the first broad strip meets the garbage planks. I don't want to have any glue from that point up and where I've removed the tape, it's created a dry spot right there, so I'm going to take some thickened epoxy and paint that out. Once I've painted that out, I'm going to neaten the nap of the cloth up a little bit. Now we're back at the table and we're spreading thickened epoxy to the back side of the second layer of garbage planking, doing it exactly the same way we did it to the bottom planking. We're using a tooth trowel because that tooth trowel enables us to get the glue to the edge of the plank without making a mess. It meters it out exactly right and uh, it's just a way to go. When we have enough epoxy on each plank, we're going to carry them over to the boat and place them in position on some mocks that you're not liable to be able to see in the camera, but uh, they're there. We've also got some holes there for some nails, so we're going to drive some nails down in some original holes and that's going to place the planks exactly where they belong. You know, I've had them in position before, I want them to be exactly where I had placed them and that's what's going to take care of that. Once we've done that and we've positioned them properly, we're just going to add a few spring clamps in preparation for clamping them down with some heavier clamping. One thing I do want to point out to you is that I'm using some pieces of 2 by 3 in order to make spreaders. Now, I don't just lay them right down flat on the garbage planks. 
what I've done is I've tipped them up and put a little wedge under one end of them because basically what I'm trying to do here is hold the two edges of the garbage plank down nice and tight with one clamp and this is the way to do it. If I put the spreader on there flat, well it might not put a constant pressure or an absolute pressure at the top or at the bottom, but with this method right here, it spreads the load out exactly the way I want it. Now we're just going to apply quite a few of these down each side of the boat with the wedges just like I said. We started at the middle and we're working our way towards the two ends and uh, we can always go ahead and uh, fill in in between if we think there's any spot that's not held down tight. The last thing for us really to do is to do a little bit of cleanup and we're going to hold the very ends of the plank and down to the transom and down to the stem with a couple of like decking screws with washers underneath them so that they won't pull into the cedar. Well that was a big step in the construction of our Total Boat Sport Dory, the composite construction of the bottom itself. It's got some man-made material and it's got some God-grown material and uh, it's a pretty interesting situation. And uh, the only other thing I'd like to say to you is that we're having another question and answer video and I'd love you to send in any questions you've got about the Sport Dory or just about anything else I can answer and we'd be glad to get into it.